Let me tell you, dear viewer, a little story. I was browsing the Steam Summer Sale while it was at its prime. 50 to 90% off like every game. It was truly a sight to behold. Amongst my 50 or so games on my wish list, I was scrolling through seeing what games I could get. A flurry of recommendations later, the algorithm spat up this game. I was extremely hesitant to buy this game because it didn't have enough reviews, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into. After a few days of rationing out my money for the summer sale, I decided to give this game a try. To my surprise, this game was a load of fun. The design of this game was like no other. Let me show you an example. Um, so, uh, yeah, picture the Flatwoods monster. Man, that's, that's, uh, oh my god, oh, there's so many tutorials. Oh, I gotta read! <sighs> that was, that was a lot of reading, but. I think I'm all read out for today. I'm gonna check out the rest of this room. Yeah, let's see, we got the uh, grandfather clock. We got, we got the combination mirror, all oh, the trusty combination mirror. Let, uh, let's just throw in a code. Uh, yeah. Wh what the fuck? Was that like the transgender mirror? Am I a girl now? What? Oh my god. No joke, they have like a gajillion skins. It's like. They got like good guys, got bad guys, they got cute anime girls, they got hot anime, anime babes. babes, they got they got fucking Pac-Man. Like, oh my god, there's just so much to choose from. It's amazing. They even got Three, six, After 45 minutes of looking at all the costumes, all of them. I finally, uh, finally time to get to this gosh dang in game. Nope, not yet, gotta get your skills. Speaking class is pretty easy, you just gotta pick a couple things that sound pretty good, and, uh, uh whatever this last thing is. I'm, not, I'm still not quite sure what this does, but it's like that lawful, neutral meme or whatever it was. It, I wonder if it has anything to do with the skin you pick to play with. And into the abyss we go! But I'm um, not quite sure on what level you're going to get. I've played this game quite a bit, and I haven't really found like a pattern or anything that determines which level you're going to go to. Sometimes it can be a force, sometimes it could be a fucking lava hell spawn, you never know. Okay, let's get into the real meat of this review. The gameplay. When I first bought this game, I was expecting it to be a turn-based RPG. You know, like most RPG Maker games are, but it turned out, to my surprise, it actually isn't, and it's more of a dungeon crawler. It's also kinda in the name, Coffee Crawler. So when I figured out this game was a dungeon crawler, I was pretty excited. I've really never played any, maybe except for uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. That's, uh, that's the only other dungeon crawler I've really played, I think. This game is pretty simple to control. To attack enemies, you walk into them. To do special moves, you press a key on the keyboard. And uh, of course, you can press the arrow keys to walk around. Simple, but very easy to control. All right, now time for the gameplay mechanics. I bet by now you're wondering, why do they call this coffee crawl? That's because you drink coffee. A lot. There's a story reason for this too. In the story of coffee crawl, everyone except for 16 people have fallen asleep. So in order to stay awake, you drink coffee. If you don't drink enough coffee, you'll get sleepy, which will give you mega debuffs. So that's one mechanic of this game, is drinking coffee. But another cool mechanic that this game introduces that I haven't really seen in any other game is the anarchy mechanic. The anarchy mechanic allows you to break the game, not literally, but break the game's rules. For example, sometimes you'll go into a room and the door will lock behind you. Well, if you're not feeling like going through that room, you can just turn on anarchy mode and break the door and go back the way you came from. The way that they balance anarchy is that the more you use it, the more felony points you gain. The more felony points you gain, the more police officers will start popping up in each map. Police officers can arrest you and take you to a detention center. Where you can either use anarchy to break the lock on the prison door, or you can use your money to bail yourself out. Using money to bail yourself out will erase all your felony points, but 
Breaking out will increase your felony points, making it even worse. But you'll save your money, and money can be really useful in this game. Money can be used to buy items from NPCs, whether it be something that'll be able to buff your stats or replenish your health like crackers or replenish your caffeine like coffee. There's also a couple uh, NPCs that are walking around that you can trade with or make friends with. When you make friends with them, you get certain types of buffs, but I wouldn't know since I've never gotten really far to actually befriend any of these people. With the exception of the Jotaro lolly, because I thought she looked like Jotaro from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so, uh, you know I had to be friends with her. Well, that sums up about everything. Now, there's a bunch of little cool things that happen in the game. Here's a couple. <laughs> Whenever a zombie dies, it says... <laughs> For some odd reason, when I fought this one enemy, it, it, it did the For some reason, when you interact with the dumpster, it makes this awful sound. This one guy in the hospital gets his stinky. I have no idea why. They even have Disney Frozen's Elsa uh, as an enemy in this game. She does say, Cole, don't bother me when, uh, when she's dead, but I don't know if that's a line from the movie. I swear, she says, let it go. I just don't have a clip for it. Altogether, this game is well worth the amount of money I paid considering how much content it has. In fact, I can happily say that I enjoyed my 8 hours that I've played with this game. There are some minor setbacks, like the odd default control scheme, or that there's no gamepad capability. Also, the game requires a lot of effort to really get into and understand the endless character skills buffs and debuffs. The other tedious game stuffs. Goes to show you that no game is perfect. That being said, I hope the developer updates the game a lot so that it can get as close to perfect as possible. If I were to rate this game out of 10, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. It's a lot of content for a small price. It has a high learning curve, and the gameplay loop can get tedious at times. Hey guys, welcome to the end slate. This is the part where I plug my other videos and talk about the video. Alright, so yeah, this, this video is pretty fun to make, honestly, and the game was pretty fun too, so that helped too. It wasn't as fun as like making a Rainbow Six video because I wasn't playing around with my friends. I was just, uh, I was just like alone. <laughs> just alone playing a single player game. Just to myself, laughing to myself about what jokes I can make about it. So, in that sense, it wasn't very fun, but the video was pretty fun to edit. I had a great time. The only bad time I had was that my computer kept on running out of uh, memory, and uh, I had to keep on re-exporting the video, and that, that really made the whole process a lot longer than it was supposed to be. This video would have been out a lot sooner if I would have had more memory on this computer, but hopefully I'll, uh, I'll change that in the near future. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. The typing parts were really hard to do because I don't know how to type. But yeah, if you want to check out my other videos, which are not of higher quality like this one. Well, the Rainbow Six videos are good. The Monster Hunter Shorts are good. Anything before that is pretty bad. So, I wouldn't recommend that. But definitely check out my more recent videos. It's going to more reflect on what you're going to see on this channel. Like, uh, more reviews, more uh, gameplay videos, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.